Today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy trinity. Today we celebrate our God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All three at the same time, but still one God. I'd like to highlight the fact that it is the Most Holy Trinity, capital M, capital H, capital T. I mean, there are other Holy Trinities and Trinities out there. For example, in cooking, various cultures have a Holy Trinity that goes with their cuisines. For example, in Cajun cooking, I understand their Holy Trinity consists of white onion, green bell pepper, and celery. In French cuisine, they also use the Holy Trinity of similar ingredients, so I won't go into that too close. In Mexican cooking cuisine, they have a Holy Trinity that uses three different chilies in their cooking. When I may make a pot of chili, a real pot of chili, I like to call my recipe a trinity. Or I think of any three pairing of characters that form together to make a team. You could say they form a trinity. For example, Larry, Curly, and Moe make the Three Stooges. Or you might call Snap, Crackle, and Pop the three characters to Rice Krispie cereal. We're famous at Christmas time, Simon, Theodore, and Alvin, the chipmunks. And there are many other similar characteristic character groupings that you could probably list, and they form a trinity. But none of these are the most holy trinity. And these other examples, like the white onion and cooking, by itself is just the white onion. It needs the green bell pepper and the celery to form the Holy Trinity. Or Mo by himself is just a crazy, idiotic man. He might still be a stooge, but he needs Larry and Curly to make them the three stooges. And Theodore is just a chipmunk by himself. That just so happens that he can miraculously speak English and people understand him. But he needs Simon and Alvin to make them the chipmunks. But with the Most Holy Trinity, it's different. With the Most Holy Trinity, we're talking about our God. And if you separate each person in the Holy Trinity by themselves, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, by themselves it does not change their identity as God. The Father is still God without the Son and the Holy Spirit. Each individual of the persons of this Trinity, when they come together, they form the most holy trinity. Our God has these three identities, but is still one God. Our God is complicated in this way. 
Some may ask, how does this work? Our God, the Most Holy Trinity, is a mystery. Theologians throughout the Church's history have and are still trying to explain how this mystery works. In seminary, I took a course on studying this mystery. And to be honest, there's only two things I remember from this course. One, if you're not careful in how you explain the mystery of the Holy Trinity, you can commit any number of heresies. And to be honest, when I read the documents, they were kind of boring, actually. I had trouble even staying awake reading them. The point of our feast slash solemnity today is not so much about understanding this mystery. It's a mystery we're never, ever going to fully understand, at least not in this side of life. Our understanding of the Most Holy Trinity continues to evolve. Yes, we have a God who is three persons, yet one God. The point of our feast slash solemnity today is not so much about understanding as it's about a relationship with our God. This is what our scriptures focus on today. Moses, in speaking with the people, does not give them a theological discourse on how to understand God. Rather, Moses speaks to the people about the great things God has done for them. They were able to hear the voice of God speak from fire and live. God led them out of slavery. Moses speaks to the Israelites about the great things God has done for them. What great things has God done for you? It is because of these great things that Moses, that God has done, Moses calls the Israelites into relationship with God. How? Because God has done great things for you. Are you called to be in relationship with our God? Jesus sends out the disciples to go out and make disciples of all nations. He sends them out to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When I baptize an infant, I like to read this passage, and I'm reminded that roughly 2,000 years ago, just before Jesus ascended, to heaven. He gives this instruction to the disciples. Go out into all the world and make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For the past 2,000 years, the disciples of Jesus have followed that instruction. They've gone out to the four, far corners of the earth, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit under this instruction, leading up to this child to be baptized. But what also stands out to me here is that Jesus tells the disciples Jesus tells us that he is always with us. He is always with us even until the end of the age. Even in the midst of life's chaos, even in the midst of life's troubles and uncertainties, our God is always there with us. 
I think this says a lot about our God. That our God values us. And that our God wants to be in relationship with each one of us. Our God desires to have that intimate relationship with each one of us. The kind of relationship that a parent has with a child. Do you have that kind of relationship with God? In a few minutes, we gather at the table where the bread becomes Christ's body. The wine becomes Christ's blood. It's here at this table that we're invited to have an encounter with our God in this special relationship. The question is, is your heart open to this encounter?